Hello, it's Mr. McDermott, and today we're going to be talking about ecology. We're entering into a new unit, and we're going to be looking at the flow of energy through ecosystems. So, usually when you're looking at the flow of energy, you're looking at a food chain. Okay? And the first thing you need to know about a food chain is that they always start with a producer. So, a food chain start with a producer. That's what they always have to start with. And a producer might be called an autotroph. So self energy there. And these producers are going to create their own energy. I shouldn't say they create their own They're converting their energy from either uh, the sun's radiant energy uh, into uh, a chemical energy in the form of bonds, or they're uh, converting it. Uh, using chemosynthesis and using the uh, like bacteria in the deep oceans using the ocean vents to, to do that. So the two processes they're going to carry out uh, is either photosynthesis photo meaning light so photo meaning light so you're using light to make something and so basically in photosynthesis you're going to take carbon dioxide and water and you're going to convert that into sugars and oxygen now this isn't uh, is a balance. I would have to put some sixes in here uh, to balance that equation, but the, the components are, are correct. So carbon dioxide water being used to make sugars and oxygen that's given off. And so we're really, we're really happy that plants do this because we can utilize that oxygen in cell respiration. Uh, and then the other process is chemosynthesis. Uh, And with chemosynthesis, you're going to see this in deep ocean vents. And so these are in extreme uh, environments for the chemosynthesis. Okay, so food chains are always going to start with a producer. And so our producer in our example of our food chain here is uh, grass. So grass is our producer. Now, <clears throat> you notice that what a food chain is showing you are energy uh, essentially energy level. It's showing feeding relationships and the reason why these things are feeding or eating other things or consuming other things is they need energy. So the grass is able, because it's a producer, to convert uh, the radiant energy from the sun into chemical energy and now the consumers are going to consume that. So to, to, for you to get an idea, here is the one producer And then all of these right here are consumers. Now consumers can't make their own energy uh, and they have to consume other things to get it. Okay? Now the interesting thing about it is that you, these arrows represent that flow of energy. And if you notice between each uh, step there is an arrow going up and that's because about 90 percent of the energy is lost through the biology through the biological processes of digestion trying to catch the food uh, and so uh, of the original energy that the grass had about 90 percent we say is lost now it's not actually lost it's being uh, being released into the atmosphere is primarily heat and it's speeding up the, uh, the atoms of the atmosphere, so it's just being uh, not utilized by the organism. So when the grasshopper consumes the grass, the grasshopper only gets about 10% of the energy, okay? Now, by the way, we say the, uh, the grass here is the first trophic level.
and the grasshopper would be the second. So first level of energy, so trophy is referring to energy, so first energy level, second energy level. Does the second energy level have as much energy as the first? Well, you should be able to look at this and see that 90% was lost, so it's only getting 10%. So the second trophic level only has 10% of the original energy that we started with, okay? Now, the grasshopper then, and it only eats grass, so we give it a special name. We say the grasshopper is a herbivore. So uh, of these consumers here, we have special types of consumers, and in this case we have a herbivore. A herbivore is only going to eat producers, right? Think of it. So you're not really worried about that uh, cow chasing you down and eating you, right? Because it's a herbivore. So uh, the grasshopper then is going to be consumed by a mouse. So does the grass, the mouse get uh, all of the energy of the grasshopper? Well, no, it had to go through the digestive processes and getting the food also. So 90% of it is lost as heat. Okay, I want to point out, look at the direction the arrow is pointed. The arrow points to the direction that the food or the energy went. So the grass did not get the energy from the grasshopper. The grasshopper got the energy from the grass, okay? So the mouse then is getting 10% of the energy uh, from the grasshopper, okay? Now you may say, Mr. McDermott, the grasshopper is way, has way more mass than a blade of grass. Well, yeah, but the grasshopper eats many blades of grass, right? It's, if you were to take all of the grass, and if anybody's done, ever done any mowing of a big field, you take all that grass that you've cut and you put it in a big pile, that's a lot of uh, biomass. And, and it, so there's a lot more grass and producers uh, on the planet than there are consumers. So the mass is gonna get 90%, but the, that is 90% of, you know, a lot less of the initial energy, okay? So the mouse, it eats grasshoppers. The mice also can eat grass, so this is just a simple representation. So the mouse would eat grasshoppers, but it would also eat grass seeds and things like that. So uh, it is called an omnivore. So the mouse is an example of a consumer that is an omnivore. And you can think of it, it eats, producers and consumers. Very opportunistic, right? Another example like raccoons or omnivores. Now, the snake. The snake is going to eat the mouse, so the snake gets the energy. Does it get all the energy? Well, no, just like in the other steps, you see that 90% of it is lost. So what's happening to the available energy? as we go down this food chain. Well, there's less available energy, and that's because we're losing 90% at each trophic level. Oh, and by the way, the mouse would be, say, it's at the uh, third trophic level, right? And the snake is at the, the fourth. Okay, now the snake maybe only eats other consumers. The snake and the hawk, maybe they don't eat any plant material. And so if that's the case, then they would be a carnivore, right?
Now, the snake then, does it get all the energy from the mouse? No, it's only going to get about 10%. So the available energy is getting less. And that's kind of why I started making the uh, arrows smaller and smaller too, uh, to represent that. So 90% is lost as heat. So that 90% going up each time is lost primarily as heat. And then we get to the fifth level here, uh, the fifth trophic level. Now, trophic levels usually don't uh, exceed more than about uh, the fifth level. Why do you think trophic levels don't primarily exceed past that? Well, at each level you're losing energy, right? And so there's just not enough energy to keep going. Which brings me to the fact that this is a simple representation. If you talk about a simple feeding relationship, that is a food chain. Food webs are going to take many food chains and link them together. Because the mouse not only eats uh, the grasshopper, it would also eat the grass. And the hawk not only eats the snake, but it would also eat the mouse, right? So these things eat more than just what's depicted in this food chain, okay? So what the food chain is showing you is that energy is flowing, and it's only flowing in one direction. So food chains, we talked about, they always start with the producer, that was key, right? They always started with the producer. So producers always start those food chains, okay? Uh, and the energy in them only flow in one direction. So this energy is flowing from the grasshopper uh, to the mouse. It doesn't go in the opposite direction. It flows in one direction. Now, we always like to compare energy to matter, and we're going to see that matter recycles. Okay? So uh, we have the trophic levels here, which just means energy levels. We have uh, producers, which start it. We have the consumers, which make up the bulk of the food chain. Uh, at each trophic level, there is only 10% of the energy from the previous trophic level. So there's less energy at each trophic level as you go up. I have kids say, why is a hawk bigger than a blade of grass? Well, it's bigger than one blade of grass, but it's not as big as all the grass in your yard, right? So uh, think about it, you cut the grass, big mound of grass, that mound is way bigger than that hawk or that snake or that mouse or that grasshopper. You actually could probably put all, you, you could put all their masses together and it would be less than the mass of the grass because the producer level has the most energy available. Now one thing that we have left off here is that uh, we have uh, things called decomposers and, and detrivores which uh, break down dead decaying matter. Okay, we didn't put those on here. Uh, but. Detris is basically the dead decaying like leaf clutter and, and uh, uh, material that's rotting or breaking down. So these are organisms that would break this down, like crabs would, would be able to break down. Uh, they filter in and, and break down dead material, okay? So uh, that would be in that category right there. Another thing, think of like earthworms break down uh, matter and stuff as they crawl through the, uh, the, the soil. Uh, they, they digest that material, okay? And the other one that we left off here was uh, decomposers. I'm running out of room, so I'll put it over here. And these would be like your mushrooms, right, and bacteria, and they're gonna break it down into its, into its uh, simplest levels, okay? Uh, I have kids all the time say, what's the difference between uh, detrivores and decomposers? And really, it's just the level in which they break things down. So these are breaking it down even uh, more completely, I should say. Uh, and so mushrooms, bacteria, you know, those are the great examples of, of decomposers. You're never going to have a, a, ch a choice on the test where you're going to have to pick between these two, right? Because they're so similar. Okay. Um, 
So looking out of here, uh, I do want to also want to talk about uh, levels of consumers. So uh, you have a, a first level consumer here. First level consumer. Second level. Then a tertiary, which just means three, right? Tertiary consumer. And so, and then maybe have a higher order consumer up here. You know. uh, and so, uh, sometimes that kind of throws kids off because you're like, wait, that's the second trophic level, Mr. McDermott. Why is it a first level consumer? Well, it's because the first trophic level was designated for what? producers right and so after the producers you start your consumers and so if it's saying the tertiary consumer they want the third consumer not the third trophic level okay and sometimes that's a little confusing for kids uh, but all in all I think kids usually get this they've seen these terms herbivore omnivore carnivore before uh, they've done a food chains in third grade and so you guys have seen that uh, and you've heard of photosynthesis uh, and so that's nothing new also. Maybe the equation might be a little new, but it's, it's not new uh, itself as far as the, the idea of it. So uh, that is how energy flows through the ecosystems. If you have any questions, uh, please.